Today's scripture is from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 5, from the New Revised Standard Version. Hear now the word of the Lord. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Some have interpreted this passage as saying that God is rejecting the Jewish people that they have failed to live up to the promise God offered, and so God has thrown them out. But I don't think that's what Paul's saying here. I think what Paul is saying is he, he, he grieves for them because they have missed out on taking advantage of God's promise. That, that salvation and, and, and faith in Christ is not about getting your ticket punched to, to heaven, but to living life faithfully here and now. And that his brothers and sisters in Judaism are not doing that. They are bound so much by the law, they are not living in the freedom God gives them. Faith gives us the freedom to act, to intercede on, on, in, in the world and to ease the groaning of creation and to proclaim God's promises of grace to humanity forever. But sometimes we as Christians fall into this trap. We feel that we are the sole caretakers of, of, of God's will, the sole interpreters of, of, of what God wants in this world. Even within Christianity, maybe especially within Christianity. And, I, and, and you know, the, the, there are people within Christianity who, who have, they, they call it inerrancy, the, 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 the belief that, that the Bible is, is, is literally word for word true. And, and I, I don't agree with that, but what, what bothers me is it's, it's not just, it's not that belief in itself, it's that their interpretation of what the Bible says is absolute. And there's, there's no room for difference. The Methodist Church is, 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 is in a struggle right now over, over, over the, 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 the understanding of human sexuality. And to be honest, I'm, I am concerned because I think we're missing the point. It reminds us uh, that we see through the mirror dimly, that we don't have a, a, a direct line from God that says this, 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 and this. Boy, boy, that would be nice. It'd be a lot easier. I, I could just come up here and read, you know, read the email from the, 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 the daily email from God and say, okay, you know, this is what you need to do. But it's not how God works. And sometimes we get caught up in, in our individual understanding or interpretation. And we miss out. You know, I, I, I believe that when we get to heaven, Jesus is not going to ask us, did you believe the right things? Jesus was going to ask, did you do the right things? Did you try to live your life in God's love and in God's grace? And that's what Paul is, is saying about the Jews, that they have, they have missed. They've been trying to, 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 to live in, in this very particular way. But they missed out on the law. They missed out on the love and, and on the grace. They have failed to be a beacon of light to the world, and, and we as Christians are falling into that same trap. 
It's easy to be in the church and not see the turmoil in the world. Do we really see the pain in others? Or do we dismiss them and say, well, you know, they're just, you know, that's their own fault. But, but look around you. Be, be it, I don't care if it's, if it's terrorism in the world or, or these rampages, which are basically an individual terrorism. When people turn to violence, it is because they feel that's the only solution. They have no other hope. We are the church. We are nothing if not hope. Sometimes we're not hope. Jesus did not condemn the sinners he encountered. He welcomed them. He opened up to them. He invited them in. He went to their house and ate with them, which was, was considered a, a, a very serious breach of etiquette. You only ate with the people that you liked. People of your proper social status. But he reached out. And, and you see the condemnation Jesus offers is, is not for the sinners, but for the saints. The ones who thought they had everything right. Who, who thought they had the line from God. Who, believed, who thought that this is the only way to believe. And failed to live in God's love and in God's grace. But they missed out on the promise. Jesus died for our sins. He died so that we can live. And he promises salvation for us all. For me, for you, and for all those out there. We're not better than others. We don't, we don't have it right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say that the United Methodist Church has, has all of its doctrine and, and everything correct. I, I think it's close. I think it's the best. But that doesn't exclude Presbyterians or Lutherans or Baptists. Our focus needs to be Christ and God's work in this world. We are not better. We are beggars. We are beggars who have found food and, and, and we want to offer, show others where they can, too can find that food. That they may live into the promise that God offers. And so we go out into the world. We go out to the world in mission. Not, not, not to others, but with others. Walking hand in hand, side by side, helping them, guiding them, but also learning from them. I, I was in Haiti uh, about a year after the uh, earthquake struck. And, and we were working on a um, housing for a medical facility. So, so teams could stuck, come and stay and, and do and be involved. And, 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 and the group I was with was, was very much focused on, on not coming and doing the work, but showing the native Haitians how to do the work. Training them in, in pouring concrete and, and, and construction. Ministry with. And I saw their faith. These people who had so little took so much delight in the presence of God in their lives. And it's something that's easy for me to forget. Because I think I've got it all. I think I've got it all right. And you know, yeah, I, 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 I go to church on Sunday, but I, I don't need God the rest of the week. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I need to be reminded of that sometimes. We have the promise. And we need to offer it to others. And we have the freedom to do that because of what God has done for us. Of Christ coming and dying for us, setting us free and showing God's power over sin and death. It 
helping us to hear the groaning in this world and offering ways for us to intercede and to celebrate. May we all live into God's promise to us. Let us pray. Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. 